Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing DNA methylation. Now, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because your support really means a lot to us and it really allows us to be able to make these videos for you on a regular basis. So with that being said, let's dive in. Let's talk about DNA really quickly. DNA is essentially our genetic code and it is located in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells like us in prokaryotic prokaryotic cells, it's located in the cytoplasm. Now, when it comes to DNA, it consists of a polymer of nucleotides that are composed of essentially a sugar backbone, which consists of a ribose sugar right here. This is your ribose sugar. It also has a nitrogenous base, and depending on the type of base it is, it will determine whether you have, uh, it, which type of nucleotide you have. These are your nitrogenous bases right here in the top right-hand corner. Then you also have finally a phosphate group and that is going to create your DNA structure. Now when it comes to DNA methylation, it's really important to understand that our DNA is very important and essentially it is the basis of replication, right? It's our genetic code. So therefore, DNA transcription specifically and translation are very highly conserved mechanisms. Why are they highly conserved? You got to realize that if DNA methylation did not exist and if DNA transcription and translation was were not highly conserved, we would be able to create cancer relatively easily. Therefore, DNA methylation is one way of preventing cancer from forming. Methylation is essentially one mechanism. Now, there are many mechanisms, but there it is one mechanism of controlling DNA replication. Highly, highly important to understand. And what, it, what happens is essentially given away in the name. During DNA methylation, a methyl group is added to the base, okay? The base that's specific that decides what type of nucleotide you have, that base gets a methyl CH3 group added to it. When that happens, essentially, you're changing the structure of the DNA. Usually, usually this is going to happen in the CPG islands. CPG islands are locations where you have a high amount of cytosine and guanine base pairing occurring. And remember, this is going to happen in a CPG island, which is very, very strong bonds. Because remember, you have three bonds, okay? in these islands and on top of that this is going to happen on both strands so these five to three and to the three to five strand both get methylated in the cytosine and the guanine base pair uh, they're both methylated on each side. And this is what DNA methylation looks like. This right here is your normal cytosine base. And when you add a methyl group right here, you are essentially causing this, uh, this, um, this base this uh, nitrogenous base essentially to end up changing and it's becoming the methylated form which is something that's very difficult to replicate with right so let's talk about dna methylation a little bit more dna methylation is essentially inactivating dna transcription this is one mechanism of epigenetics and epigenetics is how uh, you know our environment and all the things we interact with affect our genetics not just our genes themselves but everything else affects our gene transcription, DNA methylation is one factor that plays a role in epigenetics. Remember, our normal DNA is 70 to 75 percent methylated. That means on average, majority of our DNA is not transcribed. Let's write that down. Right. And why is it not transcribed? Because on average, we are not creating genes all the time. Now, if our body detects unmethylated DNA, it's going to obviously assume that it is an infection. Why would it do that? Well, usually it's going to be uh, a way of increasing our immune reactivity. If our normal human DNA is 70 to 75 percent methylated and our body detects DNA that is unmethylated, especially in large quantities, it's going to assume that there's something happening there and it's going to activate the immune system. The other reason why uh, it's really important to understand that our body is going to assume unmethylated DNA is a means of infection is that bacterial DNA is actually mainly unmethylated. So therefore, not only is our body going to assume something's wrong with our body, it's also going to assume that we have some sort of bacterial inf uh, infection happening. 
Bacterial DNA can be methylated, but the mechanism of defense for methylation in bacteria is essentially a way of defending bacteria from bacteriophages or viruses that will affect the bacteria itself. This slide is very important, especially understanding that DNA methylation is going to inactivate DNA transcription, and that is going to essentially lead to decreased gene activation, okay, and decrease RNA production and decrease proteins later on. That is very important to understand. Now, this does not mean our DNA is not functioning. No, 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 no. All it means is that we are controlling how our cells are activated and how they are uh, uh, replicating and one means of that control is DNA methylation and this is very important to understand okay one quick tip if I can give and we'll end the lecture is that the way I remember methylation is essentially the word meth for some reason this always sticks to, with my mind DNA methylation is going to stop it because essentially I think about DNA using meth and what is meth going to do it's going to hinder DNA right it's going to hinder your body it's not going to let you function properly and it's going to cause a decrease in function activity okay therefore DNA methylation is going to be a decrease in DNA activity and with that being said, that's everything you really need to know for DNA methylation. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you back here with more.